Assalamualaikum. Hi. We are going to learn on how to prepare the cash budget. For this, I will use past semester question, FIN420, question number two. And the past semester question is actually the December 2018. All right. Basically, uh, I have mentioned to you from the previous uh, class material where the cash budget has three sections. The first one is about the cash receipt. The second section is about the cash disbursement. And the third section is a section that determine whether the company will be in cash excess or deficit. Okay, to prepare the cash budget, there are six steps that we need to do, that we need to follow. Step number one is we need to determine the, and step number two, we need to determine the cash outflow from the company. So step number one and number two, really, we need to refer to the additional information given in the question. So this part is the additional information. Okay, so now we go back to step number one, determine the cash inflow to the company. So I label R. R as cash inflow for the first information. Why I categorize as cash inflow? Because the keyword here is collected. Okay, the company makes cash sales collected in the month following sales. Okay, so the word collected give us a clue that this is the cash inflow to the company. The second information is about the payment. Okay, payment. Payment is made equally in the two months after the purchases. So payment here is referring to the, we will transfer this one to disbursement. Information number three, the company pays wages, rent and other administrative expenses. So definitely this is disbursement number four selling expenses also disbursement next one tax repayment tax yeah tax payment disbursement buy machine machine cost seventy thousand will be bought so that one is the disbursement next one interest on term loan, 15,000 is payable at the beginning of every quarter. Payable, payable disbursement. And the last information, beginning balance is 80,000 and a minimum 20,000. So this information is not about cash inflow. It's not about cash outflow. So definitely we will transfer to the third section. All right, so now we have completed step number one and step number two. We have determined the cash inflow and cash outflow. We go to the step number three. We need to copy monthly sales figure and paste in the cash budget. Okay. We copy the sales figure. All right. So where did I get this figure? I get from this. Okay. I get from this. So I copy the total sales figure into the cash budget. All right. So next, step number four, fill in the cash receipts section in the cash budget. Step number four, fill in the cash receipt section in the cash budget. So we want to fill in the cash receipt section. So this is the cash receipt section. So the cash receipt is the section that specify the collection that we make. Okay, collection of cash that we make. So based on the information number one, the company makes 20% of the company makes 20% cash sales. That means 20% of sale we will collect in the month of sales. Okay, 20% of sales will be collected in the month of sales. So, 0 0.2 times this figure. 
that means the collection for January, we make sales of 2.5 million in January. We able to collect from customer only 500,000 ringgit or 20% of this amount in the month of sales. 50% is collected in the month following sales. That means the 50% amount of sale of January sales will be collected next month. 0 0.5 times 30 percent is 30 percent is collected in the second month following sale that means the balance 30 percent of sales will be collected in the next two months here so done for january so now we do for february 20% of sale in the month, 50% of sale will be collected this month, sorry this one, the balance 30% will be collected next two months. For much 0 0.2 times 0 0.2. Okay, now we have finished uh, step number four. We have done step number four. So now we go to step number five. We want to fill in the cash disbursement section in the cash budget. So all the additional information that we have labeled as D will be transferred to the cash budget under the cash disbursement section. Okay, the cash disbursement. We look at the additional information number two purchases are 60 percent of sales before we fill in the before we fill in the cash disbursement section we need to fill in the actually we need to fill in the uh, input section for purchases because we need information for we need purchase purchases information about the purchases figure so that we can fill in the payment section so purchases are 60 percent of sales and are made one month before the sales occur okay purchases are 60 percent of sales and are made 60 percent one month before the sales occur that means if we want to make sales in february we need to buy raw materials for example we need to buy raw material in january as a preparation for our sales in february so the amount of sale sorry the amount of purchases are 60 percent of february sale same goes to March So now we can fill in the payment part. 
payment is made equally in the two months after the purchases. Payments is made equally in the two months after the purchases. In the two months after the purchases. That means if we buy in January, the payment will be made next month and next two months. Okay, we have finished. Transfer the information number two to cash disbursement section. Information number three, the company pays 35000 each month for wages. 35000 each month for wages. $35,000 each month for wages. And then twenty thousand each month for rent and administrative expenses. Twenty thousand Next, selling expenses are 40,000 per month. Selling expenses, 40,000 per month. The next tax repayments of 30,000 are made at the beginning of each quarter. At the beginning of each quarter, that means first quarter is January, February, March. Second quarter is March, is April, May and June. So the beginning here means in April. And then a machine costing seventy thousand ringgit will be bought on May two thousand nineteen. Seventy thousand machine in May. We are not going to record any. We are not going to record this two hundred thousand ringgit of depreciation as depreciation is not involved physical cash transaction. Interest on term loan, 15,000 is payable at the beginning of every quarter. Interest on term loan, 15,000, beginning of every quarter. Okay. So now, we have finished, fill in the total disbursement section. 
So next step, determine whether the company is in excess of cash or deficit of cash. So the information that we need here is this part. Okay, this part. Beginning balance is 80,000 and minimum 20,000 must be maintained at all times. Beginning balance 80,000. Okay. So beginning balance. So this part to determine whether the company will be in cash surplus or shortage. Here is the formula. Firstly, we need to calculate the net cash flow. The net cash flow is the total receipt minus total disbursement. And then you need to add the beginning balance. In this case, 80,000. When net cash flow plus beginning balance, so you will get ending balance. Ending balance. And then ending balance minus minimum balance. Minimum balance here is 20,000. So minimum 20,000 must be maintained at all times. That means 20,000, the company must make sure that the company maintain 20,000 ringgit cash every month to ensure that they can be in a safety condition. Okay, so net cash flow, the total receipt minus total disbursement plus beginning balance. Now you get the ending balance, 887,000 ringgit minus minimum balance. Now you get the figure of 867,000 ringgit. This is positive figure, which means the company will be in cash surplus in April. All right. For the for May, total receipt minus total disbursement of May, you will get net cash flow of nine hundred seventy one thousand ringgit plus beginning balance of eight hundred and eighty seven thousand ringgit. So where did I get this figure? This figure is from the ending balance of April. So ending balance of April become the beginning balance for May. Ending balance for May become the beginning balance for June. Okay, so the process to get the cash surplus still the same, whereby the ending balance we did out with the minimum balance, then we can get the amount of cash. So the figure here is positive. That means the company from this cash budget show that company will be in cash surplus condition in April, May and June.